Welcome back to another Lions and Tigers Tigerty video. The first entry that we're talking about today is Lions and Tigers decides to buy the building. So on February of some year, they decide to buy this building. So we know that we now have an asset called building. Because that's what we bought. When you buy a building, you also get some land. We know that they're going to take out a mortgage. And depending on the, how what you want to call this mortgage, we'll use mortgage payable. Some type of payable account. And they're going to have cash. So the building and the land, they agree to pay 400000 But how much would you put to each? Well, in the real world, you'd have an appraisal come in and you would allocate it correctly. Because remember, this is a big issue. You can't depreciate land. So if you want to make your financial statements look easy, but better, it would be, it would be common um, for someone to consider making more to the land and less to the building. If on the other hand you wanted the tax write-off, it would just be an opposite. You'd want to call it all building. So generally there is a standard protocol that you take fair market value and you distribute it based on that. But it would be one or the other. And then we're going to credit mortgage payable for 340000 and we're going to credit cash for sixty. That should be a basic review entry for you. Okay. So now let's talk about this bond. We say that we're going to issue some bonds, Lions and Tigers is going to issue some bonds on July 1st at 96. So I always like to write the facts. Let's see, we have a bond that has a face value of 100,000. It has a contract rate or interest of 10%. It's a five year and it pays interest um, semi-annually. So really, I'm really effectively paying 5% interest because I'm making two interest payments a year. And really, I'm going to make 20, 10 payments because I'm making two payments a year. So the first thing we have to do is show how much cash we got. Now let's see, it was a hundred thousand dollar bond at ninety six, so that's ninety six percent. So I'm going to get ninety six thousand dollars. I'm going to skip a line here, but wait a minute, I have a debt where I owe a hundred thousand. So what's the difference? Well, I know I'm going to have to debit it. And if I have to debit it, I must have sold it as a discount. So discount on bonds payable, and that's just going to be the hundred thousand minus the ninety six, which is going to give me four thousand. So that is the bond issuance. Bond issuance. So that's really important. Um, we also call those the sale of the bonds. Then I said, okay, let's go ahead and record an interest payment. So an interest payment, the first one would be on 1231. We know we're going to have some type of bond interest expense. We know the bond didn't pay, didn't sell at face value, so I'm going to skip a line and we know we're going to write a check. Let's do the check first. So to get the check, we're going to take $100,000 times 5%, and that's going to give us $5,000. Or you could take 100000 times 10% times 1 half, because there's two payments, and you get the same answer. I suggest you get in the habit of doing it this way because when we're talking about bonds, we should be converting the interest and the number of payments to the actual payment period. So we're going to write a check for 5000 but we're going to use straight line amortization, so we need to use up this discount 
or spread it over its life, similar to how we would an asset over its useful life. We're going to take our 4,000, we're going to divide it by the number of payments, which is 10. So we are going to get rid of 400 of the discount every period. We add the two of those together and we get bond interest expense of 5,400. Discounts have normal debit balances, so we have to credit them to make them go away. Now we're going to make 10 entries just like this. When we redeem the bond way in the future, the discount is going to be gone. So we are just going to debit bond interest payable, or bonds payable, I'm sorry. We're just going to debit bonds payable for 100000 and we're going to credit cash for 100000 because we redeemed the bonds when they were fully mature. All right, thank you.